Hey viewers, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's video, I want to talk 3D printing. Um, I'm following this under the, the Journey to Homestead series because I think as a part of your building out your homestead, a 3D printer is absolutely necessary because um, you can do so much cool stuff with it. Right now, I'm printing cable management brackets for my, uh, my server rack. I know that may not apply to, to everyone unless you're a geek like me, but printing these for a few cents sure beats paying 10 bucks a piece or something for them, uh, you know, through a normal manufacturer. And it's a cable bracket, right? It, it, it doesn't need to do much, so it's a good use case for 3D printing. Um, <clears throat> 3D printers allow you to make so many cool things. Um, it just gives you options. And if you are decent with CAD, and drawing, you can obviously make your own stuff. That really isn't me, but uh, but I, it's still worth it, even if you don't know how to do any sort of 3D modeling or drawing, because you can download everyone else's stuff. So I would recommend getting a 3D printer. It's a cool uh, toy, as it were, but it's also a cool tool that you can use. Um, one of the upcoming projects that I'd like to do, and I still need to get the design right, but I found some pantry organization stuff. You know, part of uh, a good homestead, I think, is having a deep pantry and being able to do good uh, copy canning and rotation, right, of all the stuff that you eat. Um, you can 3D print, you know, um, organizers to help with that, right? So you, you pull a can from the front and put one in the back and it, and it, all the cans roll forward and it's just a good organization. And you can buy these things or you can print them for a fraction of the cost. So... Uh, there's a couple use cases for this, but I would, uh, yeah, I'd recommend you guys pick pick a 3D printer up. Uh, so the specifics of mine, I've got an Ender 3 um, 3D printer, and I've had it for a couple years. It works really well. Uh, I would highly recommend it. There may be an Ender 4 out now. I don't know. Get the latest one. Um, this thing works great. Uh, a few of the upgrades I've done to it. Uh, first, you can see all the green. All that green stuff is 3D printed parts because, hey, what's the use case for buying a 3D printer? So I can 3D print parts for my 3D printer, right? Um, but that was one of the first things I did. And so you can see I've got cable management, you know, and that, that chain. I've got you know, more cable management back there. I've got a holder for a camera. I'll talk about that later. Um, you know, little filler strips uh, for, the, uh, for this, uh, this channel to keep trash out of there. Uh, this is a air intake, right? So you can kind of see the grill there to direct air, air flow a little better over the chip. Um, this thing, a little simple thing, a tool holder, right? These are all the tools that come with a 3D printer. Um, and so keeping them all right by the printer, you know, you can take apart and service the whole machine with this toolkit. So it, it's a perfect spot to hold everything. Uh, and then, you know, a filament feed arm, right? And then another filament feed guide you know right here right so really handy um and then also uh let's see here upgrade parts this actually broke on me um during during the move so when i moved in and tried to get this thing set up this original part was plastic that ships with the printer and of course it's plastic so it broke uh so this was like a 15 dollar upgrade uh to go a full, you know, um, metal parts uh, for this, uh, the filament, uh, I guess what, uh, extruder, feeder, filament feeder. Highly recommend that. That was a good upgrade. Probably should have done it a while ago. But you can always just wait till the part fails and then upgrade. Uh, other upgrade is this piece of glass. So um, the print bed is heated um, and the, the plastic kind of cover that's on the, the bed works well. Uh, but for good adhesion, uh, glass really works well, uh, works a little better. And so it's cheap. So I just bought this piece of glass from Lowe's or Home Depot and cut it to size, um, uh, just with a simple glass, you know, like a scribey, you know, scratchy glass cutter. Um, so that's an upgrade I recommend. And then along with that, I use this stuff, Aquanet hairspray. Uh, spray that on the bed before you do your print and it again helps with uh, print adhesion to the bed uh, the other upgrade I did was that Raspberry Pi right there 
So there's a Raspberry Pi. And then kind of back here, hard to see, is a power assembly. So all these plans to add all this stuff, you know, you can find them on the internet. It's not hard. So that is basically tapping the power coming out of the power supply, feeding it into a, um, a buck converter, um, you, know, you know, voltage regulator, a buck converter, to step the voltage down to, um, I think, 5 volts, 5 or 12 volts whatever the Pi needs. I think it's coming 28 volts DC out of the power supply. And that powers the Pi off the printer's power supply. And then the Pi, I've got Ethernet you know, for the network connection, and then it's got a USB connection uh, to the actual printer. Right? I just I cut and fab this this cable just to have it short um, you know, in a very poorly done fashion, but it does work. Um, and then what you do is you run some software on that uh, on that Raspberry Pi called OctoPrint, and it basically gives you a web interface for um, for your printer to control things and monitor things and file manage. It's just a lot nicer than this kind of built-in rotary dial interface here. This works, it'll get you by, but it does uh, add a bit of nicety. And the other thing it allows you to do is here, I've got a camera hooked up to the Raspberry Pi via that ribbon cable. And so you can, via the web interface, remotely monitor your prints, which is kind of cool. Uh, so that was a cool upgrade uh, to do. So lots of stuff you can do here. Um, yeah, the sky's the limit with 3D printing, right? I mean, as far as materials, right, this is, what I'm printing here is PLA, which is just kind of your standard um, cheap plastic you can use for these things for kind of low-duty parts. Um, this printer will also do ABS plastic, so if you buy some ABS filaments, you can have a little bit stronger, right, um, parts if you need it. Um, but there are some other printers out there and other filaments, right, where you can have like wood impregnated filaments where you can actually kind of get a wood look where you can sand it and that kind of thing. Uh, they've got metal impregnated uh, filaments, right, where it'll actually be um, metallic, not not quite to the level of something like a, you know, where you're creating like a, like a MIM part, right, metal injection molding, that kind of manufacturing, but but I think probably like a hybrid approach. I haven't messed with that, so I don't really know firsthand. Uh, but the, there's lots of cool stuff out there. They've got Kevlar impregnated, carbon fiber impregnated. So there's there's all kinds of stuff here that uh, you can do. So I would encourage you to uh, to check all this out. Uh, it's it's really cool stuff, um, and I think it's a good uh, kind of piece of kit for your uh, for your budding homestead. So. Uh, Hope you found this uh, video interesting, and um, I guess with any of these videos, right, uh, I don't really say this, but some of you do. If you have questions about any of the topics, you know, reach out to me in the comments. Yeah, you know, I generally respond, I respond to all comments pretty much, because uh, there just, eh, there aren't that many of you watching currently, so I can, I can kind of keep up with that. So if you have questions about anything I'm doing or ideas for a show that you want to see, topics, reach out to me and let me know. And uh, along that same line, if you guys haven't subscribed yet, I would encourage you to subscribe, please. It, it helps me out. Um, I'm getting close to that magic number, as I mentioned earlier uh, in the videos, previous videos of, of a thousand subs, so I can monetize. And hey, if I can monetize this, then I can keep uh, keep doing it and uh, keep providing content. So um, thank you all for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next video.